Good afternoon, everybody, SPC Tigers. I'm, it's finally here for me to do the Tiger Spotlight Q&A. And we're going to wait a few minutes to give folks a little bit of time to join this afternoon, and uh, then we'll get started. So I'm looking forward to spending a little time with everyone today and, um, and talking to you about our health science programs and some really cool stuff for those that are especially interested in joining um, or applying to a health science program. So this is going to be exciting for me to get to come here and share that with you today. So um, looking forward to to being able to talk about that. I see we've still got some people joining us. Glad um, everyone's able to be with us today. It's a nice day. Right. Make this a little bigger. All right. Hi, Ms. Hebner. Glad to see you. Checking some messages. So when I get started um, in a few minutes, you will be able to um, hear me talk a little bit about our programs first. And then uh, towards the end, we'll open it up to questions and answers. And if there happens to be a question that you have that I'm unable to answer, I did wanna let you know that we've got some folks behind the scenes that are uh, providing some support to me today, and they will be happy to answer those questions for you. And if we don't get to a question today, We'll also make sure that we make note and get a response to you so that you know um, you get the answer that you need from us. So uh, got a few more minutes to wait. Make sure I'm following my instructions for today. Hi, Dr. Guerrero. Thanks for coming this afternoon. It's nice having my SPC family with me. So thank you so much. I appreciate the comments. Uh, you're welcome to throw comments in there while we're waiting just two more minutes before I get started. Uh, but enjoy the engagement from everybody. Thank you so much. Right. So today we're going to kind of start with um, me sharing some things about our health science programs with you. And when we're done with that, then there'll be some question and answer, and then I'll give some closing comments, and uh, then we'll wrap up our session. So, all right, Robert, glad to see you representing respiratory care. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we'll have some more of our current students join us. Uh, hopefully, we'll also have some that um, are interested in our programs. Hi, Allie. Nice to see you. All right. Hope we have some more come out and represent SPC. Okay. We're getting close, guys. Got about one more minute, and then we're going to get started. Okay. 
All right, I think we're ready to go. So I am going to get started with kind of introduction. Good afternoon, SPC Tigers. I'm Jessica Cooper. I am the Dean for Health Sciences at SPC. I'm excited to be talking with you today about health sciences. We appreciate you choosing SPC to pursue your degree and um, or even that you're here just considering it. Thank you so much. We have an especially long history in providing academic and workforce education. We're proud of 122 years serving our community. I'm hopeful that many of you know about our beginnings as a sewing school for black girls led by our founding president, Artemisia Bowden. If not, that's your homework today. Go to our webpage and read about us. Our history is a major point of pride. We are historically black and a Hispanic serving institution. Health sciences is very much part of the rich history with vocational nursing being our oldest program in the division at 70 years old. Many of our programs are in their 50th year. And of course, we're adding programs like cardiac sonography, which is starting this year. And today, I'm going to focus on the health science programs we have available, considerations for a career in healthcare, and finally, tips for improving your chances of being accepted to one of our health science programs. We've got 19 different certificate and associate degree options in health sciences. Many are targeted occupations, meaning there is great need in our community and salaries are attractive. Starting salaries can begin at 40,000 and just go up from there. So to make it easier to digest the many programs we have, I'm going to put them in some buckets, direct patient contact, indirect patient contact, and no direct patient contact. These buckets may help you determine where you might best fit into a career in healthcare if that's something that you're considering at this time. Programs involving direct patient contact include diagnostic medical sonography, invasive cardiovascular technology, radiography technology, surgical technology, phlebotomy, occupational therapy assistant, physical therapist assistant, vocational nursing, uh, registered nursing, which is our ADN mobility program, and nurse aid. In programs that involve indirect patient contact include histology or histologic technician and medical laboratory. Primarily those programs work in laboratories, though I wanna make sure that you know there could be some instances of patient contact that you always wanna keep in mind, especially when you're working in healthcare. Programs that have significantly less to no direct contact include health information technology and biomedical engineering technology. So completing one of these programs and entering the workforce puts you on the front line of taking care of those with all types of medical conditions. The necessity of frontline healthcare workers is vital for all of us. Now, there are some things to consider about choosing a career in healthcare. While the salary and benefits may be uh, very attractive, um, you do want to make sure it's a right fit for you. So I'm going to start with some of the positives, um, which is the salary and benefits. That's a major plus uh, to the extent that it can really change someone's life by starting one of these um, careers. The job security is great, and you could potentially live anywhere in the world. 
Also, you get to work with a lot of different people doing work just like you. And then last and maybe most importantly, you get to make a difference for the patients that you provide care. Now, those things are all great, but there's also some other things to keep in mind, such as your work schedule could be inconsistent or require after hours work. It may be really difficult to see people hurting or sick, as well as people who might not get well. Also, it may require seeing difficult things related to illness or injury, like blood, vomit, sputum, and other things. And lastly, you will be exposed to illness when you work in healthcare. Um, in light of the SARS-CoV-2, this is a significant consideration if you yourself have compromised immunity, major health conditions, medically fragile, and so forth. So after taking these things into consideration, I would suggest taking a look at some additional qualities that we strive to find in our health sciences students. So empathy and compassion. This is having concern and care for someone that is experiencing a difficult time. And while you may have no direct experience with cancer related illness, you must display sympathy for your patients that do. Uh, detail oriented. Attention to detail to the little things is so important. This could mean the difference between a correct diagnosis being made or an incorrect one. Good interpersonal skills. And I like to stress this one a lot. You must be able to interact with everyone. And I mean everyone. You will cross paths with staff, doctors, maybe even patients in your fa and families that you don't particularly like, but you have to step up and be the bigger person. Patients, it is likely you will encounter very demanding patient families, very demanding patients, and you must tolerate them without getting angry or upset about it. Good problem solving skills. There will be times that something happens and you're going to need to look for alternative solutions. Your patient is relying on you to be able to think on your feet when needed. Hand-eye coordination. Some programs like uh, sonography and even radiography require a great deal of positioning equipment to get the right view of a patient's anatomy. And so this is a consideration um, that you definitely want to consider in going into healthcare. Communication skills. Whether you're explaining to a patient the procedure you're going to do, or the plan of care, you must be able to make this make sense to the patient and their family. You also must be able to communicate with doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals effectively to care and advocate for your patient. So at this point, I've told you a whole lot of things, particularly programs that we have, and um, key considerations. And so now you still think that this is for you. So what next? All of our programs in health sciences require you to apply. Not only apply to SPC, but actually submit an application to one or more programs you want to be considered for acceptance. And so I need you to listen carefully here. Here's where I'm gonna provide you some really important tips for improving your chances for acceptance. So first, do your homework. All of our programs have web pages with our program information, including the application process. Read this carefully. Read it more than once and visit it often for review in case there have been any updates. Make sure that you understand the process. 
ask questions. We're here to serve you. Each program has a designated program director. They can answer questions about the career field as well as questions about the application process. They are your best resource. Also, get involved. Attend our information sessions to learn about our programs. I even challenge you to learn about more than one program. Consider your options. Some of our programs even require attendance at an information session for you to apply to a program. Get a mentor. We have a college-wide mentoring program. If you would like to be mentored by one of our faculty, reach out to faculty student mentoring coordinator, Jacqueline Stevenson for information. We'll find someone to connect you. Maybe we can even connect you with a health sciences student to answer some preliminary questions that you might have about um, going into one of these programs. Meet with your advisor. Stay connected with your advisor. Our program directors work closely with them to share important information. This could really have value to you um, related to program information. Make the grade. So academic courses like anatomy and physiology are foundational courses and your grade may be a factor on being considered in a particular program. So get a tutor if needed and do the best that you can. Be prepared. So waiting until the last minute to pull things together is generally not the best approach to really important things like your application to one of our health science programs. Make sure you've met all the requirements, make sure you have all the right documents, and make sure you have followed all of the directions. And then last but not least, take advantage of experiential learning. There is a variety of experiential learning at SPC. These opportunities take your engagement to a new level giving you experiences beyond the classroom, meeting new people, and building your talent as a professional. So, all right, I'm ready for your questions. Keep in mind, if I can't answer here, we've got a team behind the scenes that is going to get me um, a response back to you. Okay. So I am ready for questions if you have any. And you can just drop, there's a spot for you to drop your questions here. Okay. Let's see. So a question that um, we have is, if my major is nursing, am I automatically accepted into the nursing program? No. you will still have to submit an application to the nursing program that's of your interest. So whether that is the vocational nursing program, the uh, nurse aid program, or the LVN to ADN um, mobility program. Each one of the programs has their own criteria that they review and uh, used to make decisions on students being accepted. Another question, are testing requirements still in place? How are those handled right now? So yes, there are testing requirements in place 
And the way that those are being handled right now is through a virtual proctoring. So students are still able to register for the um, pre-entrance exam to our programs, but they um, are doing it virtually and it is being proctored virtually. So why do I need a TEAS test and what is that? So a TEAS, the TEAS test is a pre-entrance exam and it looks at um, basic academic preparations and it gives students a score and it helps us to be able to see if students have the right uh, academic knowledge and skills um, to be successful in one of our programs because once we accept students into our program, we really want them to be successful and this is kind of a barometer that helps us to assess that. Are we meeting face-to-face -face this fall? Yes, we actually are. We are meeting face-to-face -face on campus in our laboratories for programs that have requirements that involve them uh, practicing or demonstrating uh, psychomotor um, skills. We're also in our clinical settings. We have some limitations due to the current situation with coronavirus, but for the most part, our educational partners, um, our clinical partners have been wonderful and very supportive of allowing us to uh, work with them. So, okay. What programs can I complete in less than a year? So most of the programs in our health sciences are uh, associate degree or two year programs. However, we do have some other options that um, take less time. One of those is our phlebotomy program, which uh, we're piloting this semester to be completed in one semester. And then our nurse aid for healthcare program is also designed to be completed in one semester as well. Can I earn a, a phlebotomy certificate? Absolutely. So last year was our first year to start a level one certificate in phlebotomy. So this uh, was a really great uh, thing, a celebrating point for us. And we're very proud that students can now earn a certificate opposed to just taking courses in phlebotomy. So does the uh, so does having um, a CNA help me get into nursing? Some of our programs, including our nursing programs, in the criteria for uh, acceptance to programs may give additional points towards having already earned certain credentials. So it could be of benefit to um, to you, but it is not required. And team, I see a question about what does self-screening mean? And if you could maybe help uh, with some clarifying on that and I can potentially um, offer some feedback. That one. Okay, I think we have time maybe for one more question before we um, move to closing uh, things up. So what safety precautions are you taking during the pandemic to ensure safety in the labs? So this um, right around spring break, uh, a team was created across uh, the, the college district and we all came together and, and started working on a plan and, and how we could do things. And from that point, um, a, an additional uh, command center was started and um, 
all kinds of things were considered and faculty, uh, staff, administrators worked collaboratively to come up with um, a plan for, for returning back to campus. And a decision was made for our, our career and technical programs to be considered for going to campus. So we have um, screening that's taking place uh, bef before uh, being allowed to go uh, to laboratories. We also, um, are using uh, personal protective equipment to ensure that everyone that's working in the building is uh, following uh, safety and health protocols. We have directional signage and um, in our buildings that map out how to get through the building uh, safely so that we uh, have people going in one direction as opposed to crossing multiple paths. So these are all different kinds of safety um, considerations that we have have made as as well as the six foot uh, distancing um and something else all right well i think we're coming to um to our end so i want to just say thank you for joining uh, me this afternoon and letting me talk to you about our programs in health sciences. I uh, look forward to serving you in the future. So I thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day.